Howdy y'all, Pastor Josh here with our Wednesday midweek, and I want to start, and we'll be in Isaiah chapter 64, so if you want to pull that up, uh, Isaiah 64, 1 through 4. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God beside you who acts for those who wait for him. And this is God's word. So what does it mean to wait for God. What does it mean to wait for the Lord? We have it in some of our songs. We've heard that phrase before. Uh, what does that look like? And as we examine that question, a couple things come to mind. First of all, in one sense, God works for everybody, right? He makes the sun rise on the just and the unjust. He sends rain on the good and the evil. He brings seed time and harvest even to those who are rebellious. God works for all of his creatures, and that work is meant to draw those who do not know him to the knowledge of him and to repentance. In our text, though, that we just read, the work that is referred to uh, is that grace that is given to those who belong to him, right? No eye has seen a God beside you for uh, who acts for those who wait for him. So, the work mentioned here is clearly not just creation, it's not just preservation, it, it's not just a few, it, it, it's the investment of God's infinite sovereign power to do everything his people need to have done for their good. And so, how does he do it? And what does it look like? He does it for those who wait for him. So, our question is, what is that? What does that look like? So, as God speaks to his people in the book of Isaiah, uh, they're in danger. They've got enemies surrounding them. They've got the Assyrians and the Babylonians pressing upon them. Now, the danger, though, that God identifies is not the Assyrians or the Babylonians. The danger and the temptation for them is that they would give in and call upon the Egyptians from the south and, and ask them for help instead of asking God for help. And Isaiah talks about it in, in chapter 31. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on their horses who trust in their chariots because they are many and then their horsemen, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. So the greatest danger is to not look to God, but is instead to look to the other things. So when God says, wait on the Lord, when scripture says, wait on the Lord, this is the first thing. Pray. Seek God's counsel. You want to get out of a problem. You want to get out of trouble. Wait on the Lord. They soon forget his works. They did not wait for his counsel. Psalm 106 Talk to the Lord about it, and 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 that's something that we're called to do. I, if you're anything like me, you've gone through a situation, you've you've been through a struggle, or you get to a like a thought provoking time in the midst of a struggle, um, and you ask yourself, when when was the last time I prayed about this, right? And God calls us to do this. Paul talks about this in 1 Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing. And so, and, and it's a challenge. But before we do things, before we make decisions, before we jump into something, um, have you prayed about it? How would it go if I relied on the Lord? What would he want me to do? That that That's our prayer. And so, um, and what does that prayer sound like? Dude, it, it's different in different situations, but um, I'm in trouble. This is my struggle. What should I do about it? 
And that's a very simple prayer. That's a very honest prayer. Those are the kind of prayers that God calls us to do. Okay, so what might that response look like? Here's what Isaiah 30 says. God says to his people, In returning and rest, you will be saved. In quietness and in trust, that will be your strength. But you were unwilling, and you said, No, we will flee upon horses. Therefore, you shall flee away, and we will ride upon swift steeds. Therefore, your pursuers shall be swift. In other words, God is saying, Sometimes... When you call upon the Lord, when you're waiting upon the Lord and you pray to him, sometimes his instruction will be to sit tight and to not do, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Like sometimes that won't be his direction. Sometimes it will be sit down. I'm going to work for you. Rest. I will be your strength. And the evidence here is sometimes God's people didn't do that. And sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes God's instruction for us is to sit tight and I will be your strength. Okay. What did Moses say to the people when they were fixing to cross the Red Sea? Fear not, stand firm, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you this day. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. So, sometimes, be still means be still. We good on that? All right. So, sometimes, then, God will also say, get up and, and, and go. Go into battle and fight. Uh, if you read 2 Samuel 5, here's the situation. David has just taken over after Saul's death, the Philistines have laid siege to them. And David inquired of the Lord and asked, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you give them over to my hand? And God answers, Go, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And so David goes and he fights and the rest is history. So, Sometimes we're told to go and fight and to go into that battle as God has called you to do. And so we, we listen to what God has for us and we pay attention to what God lays out for us and, and what God sets before us, right? Proverbs 21 says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. So, sometimes God says go. Not wait, but go. And God carries his people into battle, into a spirit of expectancy, and says, yes, I will fight with all my might, and the one in whose hands I belong, he is the one who will bring me victory. Here's what it says in Psalm 33. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help. He is our shield. Our heart is glad in him. We trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we we hope in you. So the Lord brings us forward. And, you know, there's precautions that go with that, right? We lock our front doors at the same time. Uh, and here's Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. So we wait for the Lord. At times we're called to pause. At times we're called to press forward trusting that in either case, he alone brings safety. When the Lord says act, we act with a spirit of reliance upon his work, and we wait for the Lord in a spirit of expectancy that even though our labor 
is vulnerable and is paltry. The final result of what we do lies in his hands. And, and, and so we let him do it. So, and here's where we end up. Circumstances conspire to put us under pressure. We feel like something's got to be done. Like somebody ought to do something. Have you ever heard that phrase? Have you ever thought that it's a thing that pervades in our culture? Wait for the Lord. Pray. Seek his counsel. What would he have me do, if anything? And if the Lord says, not yet for you now, then listen to that. And if the Lord says, get up, go, get on your war horse, and fight with all of your might, then then go. And, and so whether we sit or whether we go, whether we work, here... Here's what we need to have in common. We wait for the Lord. We pray. We have a spirit of expectancy that no matter how faulty our labors are, the final issue is in the hands of the Lord. And he loves us. And he loves to work for those who wait for him. And that's our big idea this week. I love you guys. I hope everything is going well for you this week. Uh, we will meet on Sunday for worship. We will have Holy Communion. We will do that in a safe manner. Uh, if you are coming with us on Sunday and worshiping in person, we welcome that. If you're still hanging back, uh, we're still working on our technology upgrades and all that stuff. And we want to have that be in a good situation for you. So we're going to continue to work for that. So, um, I look forward to Sunday and to seeing some of you. If I can't see you, uh, that's that's cool too. Just uh, let us know how you are. Give us a call and and check in, and uh, we we still care about you. So follow this. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, don't follow me in real life. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, click the uh, ring the bell. That's what we say on YouTube. Ring the bell so you get those notifications. Um, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Stay frosty, and we'll see you in the next one.